Welcome to the sixth lecture on module theory. Today we will discuss vector space versus free modules. So, vectors are built over fields while the modules are built over arbitrary rings. In fact, the collection of free modules, uh, it is more close to the collection of vector spaces. But there is a big difference between vector spaces and free modules. So today we will elaborate four examples and we will see the properties that are there in vector spaces need not be there in uh, free modules. So we start with the definition of free modules. So let M be an R module and you consider a subset of uh, M then the following are equivalent. So the first statement it says that your module M it is spanned by X and X is linearly independent. So this is equivalent to say that each element of M it can be written as a linear combination of some elements of X. So this is the meaning of M is spanned by X. And next you can prove that X is linearly independent if and only this expression is unique. That means this collection of scalars a1 up to ar and this collection of elements in x these are unique in this expression. Okay. And a subset x of m which satisfies one of these equivalent condition uh, it, is, it is called a basis of m. So that means this is the base of m. You can construct your module m using that set. So this m it is spanned by x and this is this set is linearly independent and R module M it is called a free module if M has a basis. Okay. So we know that uh, this is the classical result in linear algebra that every vector space has a basis. So therefore the collection of vector spaces these are examples of free modules but there are modules which uh, do not have a basis. So here are some examples of free and non-free modules. So you consider an arbitrary set gamma and then you can consider this direct sum of R how many copies that is indexed by gamma. So this is direct sum of R and this direct sum is varying in gamma. So we can prove that uh, this R module this is uh, this has a basis so this is a free R module and so this collection of elements E alpha where alpha component is 1 and all other components are 0. So this will give a basis and that is the standard basis. For example, if your index set gamma it is just this finite set then this direct sum it is just r power n and it is just collection of n tuples and then component wise addition and scalar multiplication it gives an R module structure on that and you can prove that it has a standard basis. So this is a free R module. And in fact, uh, these are all the examples of free R modules up to isomorphism. Here are some examples of non-free modules. So first you consider a non-zero finite abelian group, let's say additive abelian group. Then you can give Z module structure on M. So scalar multiplication you can define in the obvious way. So this M, this is a Z module and we claim that this Z module, it does not have a basis. Why? Because you consider any element in M, then that element, it will be annihilated by some uh, positive integer. So this is 0 for some N greater than or equal to 1. So that means this X, it is linearly dependent. It, satisfy, uh, it satisfies a non-trivial relation. Okay. So that means any non-empty subset of M, it cannot be uh, linearly independent. And you are considering non-zero uh, uh, abelian group M. So uh, this does not have a basis, that means. And second example, here you consider direct product of J and how many copies so that is indexed by this set of natural numbers. Okay. Then this Z module, it is not a free Z module. So this is something non-trivial and it requires some proof. Next we will elaborate some examples to see the difference between vector space and free module. So we know that in vector space we have this property that 
each linearly independent subset it can be extended to a basis but this property it is not there in arbitrary free modules so here is one example you consider z as a z module so this is a free z module why because you have basis so the singleton set consisting of one or singleton set consisting of minus one this give basis of z so this is a free z module then you consider this singleton set consisting of two then this is linearly independent over z because whenever it satisfies a, a relation then that implies that n should be zero that relation should be trivial so this is linearly independent over z now i claim that you cannot extend this linearly independent uh, subset to a basis why because this singleton set uh, it does not generate z because it generates only 2z and that is not z okay so since it does not generate z uh, if you can extend this set to a basis that means you have to add one more element to that set that means uh, let's say b so you consider this set 2 comma b and you can prove that this set it is linearly dependent why because it is satisfying this non trivial relation where this b and 2 these are scalars okay. and its superset x that will also be linearly dependent so that means x cannot be a basis so conclusion is that this linearly independent subset you cannot extend it to a basis of z here is another example so we know that in case of vector space every spanning set that contains a basis moreover a minimal spanning set uh, that is a basis but these properties uh, these are not there uh, in case of free modules so again you consider this z as a z module this is uh, this is free z module and you consider this spanning set 2 comma 3 why this is a spanning set because uh, one you can generate uh, by two and three so namely one you can write three minus two okay so once one is there then each integer you can generate by uh, two and three so this set this is a spanning set and i claim that this is not a basis why because just now we have argued that two comma three it is it is linearly dependent because it set so it is not a basis now if you reduce this set further so you just consider this singleton set then this is the it, it does not generate z so you cannot reduce this set further to get a generating set or spanning set so this set this is a minimal spanning set and since this is not linearly independent so this is not a basis so we are having a minimal spanning set which is not a basis or in other words we are having a spanning set which does not contain a basis so this theorem it says that uh, the cardinalities of any two bases of a free module over a commutative ring are with identity these are equal so similar properties we have in case of vector space so we know that any two bases of a vector space uh, these have same cardinality okay so similar properties we can have for free modules but over commutative ring with identity okay because we, we can reduce it to vector space case so since your base ring is commutative ring with identity uh, your base ring has a maximal ideal and you just go modulo that maximal ideal then you are in this case vector space and you know that any two bases of a vector space these have same cardinality so using that fact you can prove the cardinalities of any two bases of a free module over a commutative ring r with identity these are equal and that cardinality we denote uh, it by dime of f or rank of f we call it dimension or rank of f but this theorem it is not true in case of uh, free module over arbitrary uh, ring so here is the example so a free module it may have basis with different cardinalities but of course your base ring should be non commutative yeah. 
So you consider this ring, it is endomorphism ring of n. So it is collection of all endomorphisms that means module homomorphisms, z module homomorphisms from n to itself. And what is n? Your n is this uh, direct product in finally many copies that is indexed by the set of natural numbers. Then this is a non-commutative ring and if you think it as a module over itself then this is a free uh, module. Why? Because uh, it, it contains identity. So this singleton set it will give a basis. So this R this is a free R module and it has basis uh, 1 and we claim that this set consisting of phi 1 and phi 2 this is also a basis of R where this maps phi 1 and phi 2 these are defined in this manner. Okay. So this phi 1 and phi 2 these are endomorphisms from N to itself and we define in this manner. So you consider uh, this tuple A1, A2, so on and you just map it its uh, yeah, so first component is A1, second one is A3, so on. And in similar way, you define phi 2. So it is just uh, all even components you are collecting here. Okay. So let's prove that this is a basis of R. So that means we need to prove that this set, uh, it, it, uh, this set, it generate R, your R module R, and it is linearly independent. So to prove that you consider uh, another um, set of functions psi1 and psi2 and psi1 it is defined in this manner and psi2 it is defined in this manner. Then you can verify all these equalities. So for example phi i compose psi i that is identity map and phi1 compose psi2 it is just zero map and phi2 compose psi1 it is also zero map and this expression psi1 compose phi1 plus psi2 compose phi2 that is identity map. So using these equalities we will prove that this is a basis. So first we should prove that this generates R. How? You just consider this expression and from here you can you can have that any any endomorphism from n to itself you can just write in this manner. So you just multiply psi from the left. So it is psi 1 compose phi 1 plus again psi and psi 2 compose phi 2. Okay. So, yeah. so this psi you can write as linear combination of phi 1 and phi 2 where this coefficients psi compose psi 1 and psi compose psi 2 these are just scalars coming from R. So this set it generates your R module R and why it is linearly independent? So you consider uh, a relation. So suppose this psi1 and psi2 it satisfy, uh, satisfies this relation mu1 compose phi1 plus mu2 compose phi2. Suppose it is 0. Okay. We need to prove that this relation it is trivial relation. That means these coefficients, these scalars, these are 0. And how to prove that? You just multiply this thing from right. You just multiply uh, by uh, psi, psi 1. Okay. So mu 1 compose phi 1 compose psi 1 plus mu 2 compose phi 2 compose psi 1. Uh, again, again it is 0 map. And now what is this one? So phi 2 compose psi 1 it is it is 0 and this one it is phi 1 compose psi 1 this is identity map. So from here uh, you will get mu 1 is 0 and in similar way you can prove that mu 2 is 0. So this set phi 1 compose phi 2 this is linearly independent set. So you are having a basis uh, of R of this R module R uh, and whose cardinality is 2. So that means you are having two bases uh, with different cardinalities. Okay. In case of vector space we know that any subspace that is also uh, that is also a vector space and if your vector space is finite dimensional then its subspace that is also finite dimensional. So 
in case of three modules you you do not have that property so here uh, you consider a finally generated uh, three module so it may have a sum module which is neither finally generated nor free where this polynomial ring in infinitely many variables x1 comma x2 so on over a field k then this this is a ring and if you think if you consider this as a module over itself then this is a free r module okay because it has basis 1 and then you consider the sum module of r generated by these variables x1 comma x2 so on so that means this n it is nothing but the collection of all polynomials uh, here whose constant term is 0 then we claim that this sum module uh, this is not finally generated and it is not free why it is not finally generated so if possible suppose your sum module n it is generated by this finite collection so f1 up to fr but each fi this is a polynomial here and that means only finitely many variables are involved there since you are considering finite collection so there exist m such that all these polynomials f1 up to fr this is there in the polynomial ring in x1 up to xm over k okay now if you consider this variable xm plus 1 and let's uh, see that whether we can generate this element uh, by this collection or not so you just write this element as all linear combination of f1 up to fr where scalars g1 up to gr it is coming from r and then f1 and fr these are elements of n so that means constant term of uh, f1 up to fr these constant terms these are zero so if you substitute x1 uh, equal to x2 up to xm uh, these are zero if you substitute uh, it here then you will get that x m plus 1 that is equal to 0 so you are having a contradiction and this contradicts the fact that n is generated by this finite collection so n cannot be finitely generated and next we should argue that why this n it is not a free r module so you consider uh, two elements of n and that two elements uh, that said it is not uh, linearly independent why because you just consider uh, let us say f and g uh, from n then you can have this non trivial relation f times g minus g times f it is 0. So this f uh, and g these are satisfying a non trivial relation ok. So this this set f comma g this is uh, linearly dependent and that means you cannot have a basis consisting of more than two elements but your set your sum module n uh, it is not finally generated so you cannot have a basis uh, with less than or equal to one element so that means conclusion is that that your sum module n it cannot have a basis so n is not a free r module